Welcome back, everybody, to uh, Neo Loops, uh, WinningGalaxyEmpire.com. This is the latest video blog. Uh, this is going to highlight the new Galaxy Empire Battle Calc version 1.0. This is the first official release version. We are finally out of beta. Uh, very proud to announce that. Um, up here at the top, we see that it is property of Neoloop of all 010. That is a new server for me. And if you had any questions, um, you could uh, actually, it's a server merge, sorry. Uh, but if you had any questions, you could email me at neoloop at winninggalaxyempire.com. Uh, I'd love to uh, help you out and answer anything that you might need to know about it. Um, here we're going to take a look at the functions of the actual battle calculator. So first off, with the uh, defender coordinates, um, you know we have the uh, galaxy system and planet. It's important that you plug that in uh, because this is going to help you out later whenever you're determining as an attacker how long it takes you to get there. Um, we also have a, a nice little function here. This is going to be like a fleet return time calculator. So let's say you scan one of your alliance mates and you see that they're under attack from this guy that you want to, uh, you know, go crash his fleet whenever he lands back on his planet. Uh, and you want to time how long it's going to take for his fleet to get back to his planet. You go into the scan detail. You type in the, the time that it says there. You run the scan report from there. You go into your email and you check it out and you put in the current time according to the scan report and the time to target on the scan report. It will tell you minutes or hours, minutes, and seconds how long it's going to take for that fleet to return back to their planet. And it will also tell you the date and time that the fleet will uh, arrive in case you wanted to coordinate your attack that way. Um, up here at the top too, we also see the result of the battle. I moved this, it was down here, but I just wanted to make a little more room. And it tells us that in this battle, the attacker wins. Uh, if we were to change this and maybe say have uh, 150,000, uh, you know, now we're going to see, uh, I guess the attacker still wins, 250,000. Uh, now we see a draw, and of course it'll change if we do uh, 2 million into a uh, defender win. So that does update based on who's winning um, or if it's a draw. Um, this part should go without being said. This is where we find the uh, the fleet death order. Uh, this is for the defender and this is the order that they will die in. Now the attacker is the exact same. That was the recent change uh, for TAP. It no longer is a variance down here. We've got a set death order now for both sides and they did change both of them so this is updated for that. Um, we also have a recovered line for both the attacker and the defender. Um, this will change based on what your recovery amount is. Say it's a um, alliance domination event, uh, or if it's just normal, or if you've got VIP, but this will show you what what uh, ships are going to be walking away from this battle. So it's good to have in case you want to, uh, you know, determine a second attack or anything like that. Um, head down here to the attacker window. We see the coordinates again. We want to punch in, and then this will tell us based on what our slowest ship is here how long it's going to take for this fleet to fly over here and attack. Uh, this is off by about five percent now as of the last week uh, on some ships. It's off. Um, tap change something. I'm not sure quite what it is, but once I get that updated, we'll, we'll uh, plug it in. Or if I get a little more detail on which ones are off and which ones are right, and if it's a certain amount, um, yeah, we'll definitely put that in the blog. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. It is off by a small amount right now. You can also put in what the defender has as far as resources. And you can see what the actual amount is that you're going to loot. Now, right now it says zero because we're losing this battle. But let's say they only have... Uh, you know, 5,000 uh, destroyers here. With these ships, we're able to see how much we're able to loot, and it's going to be, you know, uh, the full amount. If we took away the um, interceptors, and we just had the Iron Behemoths, and say we only had 1,000. Um, ooh, we didn't win the battle, so maybe 2,000. Um, yeah, now we're seeing exactly how much we're still taking the whole thing. So I guess really not all our sources. But um, anyway, so you understand that. And also, if uh, we wanted to see how many uh, large cargo it takes to actually loot, um, you know, you're able to plug that in too. So say there's only one light fighter, and we plug in 303 large cargo. That's what would loot the maximum amount of resources from this planet. Then we have the debris calculator based on what ships die. Uh, you can see how much metal and crystal is going to be there and what the percentage chance of the moon is going to be. So if we have 200 destroyers versus 200 destroyers, we've got a 20% chance of, uh, of creating a moon. And if we have you know just these light fighters and these destroyers here and some large cargo, we only have a 3% chance. So this is where that changes. It also says how many recyclers are needed to recycle um, you know, that amount of resources and how long it's going to take for the attacker to get to this defender planet to actually recycle that. So if you're the defender and you want to know if you can send your recyclers at a 10% speed and, uh, you know, make the run in 30 minutes, this is where you find that out. 
A little further over here, we're going to see the result of the battle. Uh, when you open a battle report, this is the first thing that goes up. <clears throat> the uh, units by the attacker and defender, and then the units lost by the attacker and defender. I've also got included in here the uh, galaxy amounts. Um, <clears throat> this is accurate, except for whenever there's that uh, attack a defender and steal half of their total amount of galaxium. Um, you know, of course, this is based off of this battle. Um, you know, if the uh, the winner of this battle will steal half of the galaxium created from the opponent's ships. Um, in this case, it'll be all out of this large cargo and, uh, you know, one light fighter. So that's why the defender is actually going to have one more galaxium than the attacker does here. Or, sorry, yeah, than the attacker in this case. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Our, over now we have defender gas to run. Important that you have uh, scout and they have a million destroyers and say 70 million gas. You're thinking, I don't even think you can launch those destroyers with that amount. You can plug in the hyperspace tech. If you've got 12 tech, probably have 12 to plug that in. Um, and you can see it's going to cost about 529 million for them to launch that fleet. So 70 million is not going to take them far. Maybe they have a galactonite zone of 26% on there. Now we're really only going to cost them 391 million. And if they launch at a 10% 10, 10 speed, then it's cost them 39 million to run from you. Um, so this is good to good know if uh, you're trying to determine whether or not like a um, an Uber fleet is uh, is a beached whale. Um, they won't be able to, to run from it if they don't have enough gas to launch. So they either have to shield, shift, or you know just take part of their fleet off and absorb the hit. Um, again, with the attacker, exact same thing. You can plug in your uh, space to your cost to launch this ship. Maybe you have two stone to own that give you 50 per gas. You only have 70 that. How much that take to do that? If you launch at uh, 10, well, you already that's kind of long. 10 drops down to that, that amount. So, help you just plan your gas use. Um, this here is the consecutive attack. Now, this was recently broken by app. Um, consecutive attack used to uh, consist of some mobile attacks, uh, different numbers of bullet attacks. Two weeks ago when they made their update, they went to attack. I'm sure going to change. You will get this calculator updated for that, but for the meantime, it is up to date for the current version of Galaxy Empire with the uh, consecutive attack being uh, somewhat broken. Um, in order to turn this on, you have a 2 in here. If you want to shut off, you put 1 in. So what I like to do is the hacker is put a 2 in for the defender, leave a 1 for myself, so that way I can see the worst case scenario. That's if the uh, defender were to get um, you know, double attacks with all of their ships or consecutive attacks with all of their ships and I were to get none. Uh, it's really not going to happen because you have an 8% chance of each ship versus each true type of during your consecutive attack. Um, more than likely, this is actually going to be a 2-2. Two -two. This is going to be the most likely scenario. Um, it's not ever going to be 100% accurate for the, like large, a bunch of different ships in there. Some yeah. of them trigger, some of them don't. But it's going to be as close as you can get. And like I said, it's best to just kind of figure out worst case scenario, what you'd be walking away with at the end of the battle. Um, last thing on this top section here is the uh, Neo Iron Power Scale. I like to call this the NIP Scale. I hate the Power Scale aim. Uh, it's a, a of all the re resources that were used to the ships, uh, to build up your planets, your constructions, um, also for uh, search. I've watched these and these guys still in the top. Spent so many resources upgrading their Planet X. They have no fleet left. So, um, you know, I hate the Galaxy Empire power scale. And this is a neutral power scale. This is something that is only to be basing the strength of your fleet 